not that much which people usually make seem like it's like a fuck ton but that's for the average person that does not intake 2,000 milligrams of caffeine. Well, neither do I, but when I stopped liquor, I started with caffeine. <laughs> yeah. And I thought I was going to have way more of a tolerance when I was in Scottsdale. Mm. 30. M milligrams? Shots. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's a fucking awesome opener. Thanks for that. <laughs> um, Avery, welcome. Yes, sir. Glad I'm to so be here. excited, dude. <laughs> how are, how are you feeling today? Really good, actually. Really good. I slept in a bunch, mm -hmm. and I haven't in a long, long time. Got off them doubles, so it's nice just to take it easy, man. Fuck yeah, I bet. Um, well, welcome. Do you kind of want to give? I I, I have um, a potential name for it yet for the podcast. Uh, I'm still kind of working with it just because I'm trying to see what else might sound better but i think i already know what i'm gonna go with so with this unnamed show for now do you kind of want to give like an introduction to you um what you like doing just you know say in general general opener well <clears throat> i'm avery i serve and bartend for a living uh, i've worked all kinds of jobs used to be a plumber did a, a lot of ranch work all kinds of contract work um i've known you for fuck <laughs> Is it seven um, now? Almost. I think no. I think this August will be six. Six. Yeah. Okay. For so six years now, we did. That's. I think we both got our sports backgrounds with each other. Mm -hmm. Um. Although I did wrestling, you didn't do wrestling. That yeah, I should have. Honestly, I think that would have been a lot of fun. Yeah, that that was fun. It was, it was challenging, but it was fun. Mm -hmm. Um. Got back into working out recently, man. That was that was rough. Started feeling fat, so that's never fun. Um, feeling better now. You you've been on that workout grind for a long time now. Oh though. yeah, I think consist. <laughs> Hold on, I'll go get some napkins for that. <laughs> oh wait, are we allowed to swear? Am I allowed to swear? Yeah, fucking. Bro, you know me. You really think I was going to make a fucking PG-rated podcast? I didn't think so, but I don't know. Got the Bible in the background. So, here, here, <laughs> dude, so here's the thing. It's about the nature of your heart, and not, it, or it's about the attention of your heart, and as long as you're not, like, if I was like, fuck yeah, dude, that's awesome. Yeah. That's better than, like, fuck you, dude. I see what you're saying. So, I mean, should I be doing it? Probably not, but... I mean, my heart has good intent, but... My balls still get a tingle here and there. Well, and that's, like, all that matters. As long as you're doing it, like, for the right reasons, then you'll be all right. <laughs> you look so uneasy. Why are you doing this to yourself? That makes two of us. Here, come on. Are you going to be nice if you stay? All right, I'll take that as a yes. Has it been going this whole time? Not the whole time. I broke it up just in case, but... Well, I was waiting for you to walk in. We've been expecting you. <laughs> I'll throw that in the opening scene too. Um, fuck, what were we saying? Um, the workout thing. Oh yeah, so so I mean, con con that. consistently, I think I've been at it for about like two years now. And dude, like looking from when we graduated to now, mm -hmm. I, it's low key kind of crazy. Like I, I'm not gonna lie, I still feel like the same size as I do like from senior I'll year. Say that. Dude, and it's so crazy to just like see the difference. Even now, I just finished eating, so I got a little bit of a food belly going on. <laughs> but um, cool, dude. I'm so glad to have you on. Like, <laughs> I, the the cool thing with like all my friends is there are people that I know, like would want to come on and do this, and like they're like they each just have some sort of like crazy shit going on <laughs> that they're interesting enough to have on here. Like, I'm so glad all of my. My homies are equally as autistic as me, but <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get it. So uh, I'll kind of throw some 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 openers here. Um, have you? Because this is like more recently becoming on my, like my Instagram feed. Yeah. Um, do you know about like brain rot videos? Um, I don't know if I know the specific terms because I get behind on a lot of stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I think I can guess. So like, do you want to tell me what you think it is? Because you probably might yeah. have seen some. So I imagine it's just really, really shitty edited <laughs> memes with like really, really loud music in the background. 
or basically basically there's yeah. so like there's this series of brain rot videos that like i've been watching and it's and it sucks because like with tiktok reels like anything that's like short form based even if you watch it for more than a second the algorithm is going to be like oh this guy likes it you don't oh, even have okay. to like it share it comment it if you just watch it that's count that's being counted towards your algorithm so like at first <laughs> at first I saw like two seconds of it. I'm like, okay, this is stupid. So I, you know, keep going. And then like a week later, I saw it again, and I was like, okay, well, what is it? And then like I would stay for like maybe like half to two thirds of the video, mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, yeah, that's about what I expected. And then like like just like this week, I saw one, and I was like, I watched through the whole thing. I'm like, I ate nothing from this, but it okay. tickled a little part of my brain that I don't I don't know that many other things could. <laughs> So then, like, I, like I'll show you after this, like what I'm talking about, and you're gonna be like, yeah, this is fucking stupid. But there's something about it. <laughs> there's something about it that's very like stimulating, which is is it like sounds like softcore porn. Yeah, uh, it's a little stimulating. <laughs> you don't get much from it, but you still like it. Yeah. You're not going to look away, and once you realize that that boob's going to stay 90% covered, you ain't going to see that last 10%, you go away. Damn. Well, I guess I've been watching soft porn this whole, softcore porn this whole time. And it's rotting your brain. <laughs> but this, <laughs> but so like, okay, I'll, I'm going to say two things, two attributes about the video, and you let me know if it like makes it better or not. Okay. It involves a chicken nugget and a chicken leg. From the same chicken? There's no chicken. It's just like food items with faces. Oh. Doing what? <laughs> <laughs> like, what's the point of that? There isn't. That's the that's the fucking thing about it. It's I like, I, I mean, I'm not watching it consistently. Obviously, there's like other stuff. But like, right. I feel like just by having it on my feed, I'm like, damn. I definitely do need to put some attention to <laughs> other shit. So it's it's probably like you know, okay you know what I I I think I get it. It's literally like 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 uh it's like Reddit editors. Type basically of humor. like do, like do you remember do you ever remember seeing or hearing about like those dancing fruit and vegetable videos, like the little cartoon animation ones? I mean probably like I've probably seen, you know I I feel like all of those things, everyone has seen but they can't really recall. Probably yeah. Like I know what you're talking about I think, mm -hmm. but I don't. You know, like I, I've, I've probably seen it. Okay, yeah. cool. Well, that, this conversation went about just where I expected it. <laughs> I'm more familiar with the brain rod than, than you. Um, which again, don't know what that says about me. But we're gonna we're gonna pretend like it. You know, ugh, it means nothing. Right. Um, next, like what? Oh, I didn't even ask. How was the drive here? It was actually really nice. Uh huh. Um, I thought that it was going to take a lot longer than it did. I don't know why, but I merged on to... Anytime you're going anywhere and you can merge on the highway just like that, mm -hmm. it's a good trip. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. When everyone isn't just in your way or you're fighting to get over, but like you hop right on mm -hmm. I-10, you get all the way over there, like no one's in your way. That's just... That's that's here. It, it is a good feeling, especially like I feel like here where the where like we're at, and especially with how low like Arizona drivers are rated, um, it definitely is nice and a little bit reassuring to, like you said, have that. I I think the 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 times where I experience that the most is like anytime I'm going like south of of Tucson, mm -hmm. um, like whether it be to Sierra Vista to Texas, like, dude, and the, well, and the biggest thing I feel like that plays a factor in it is the cops, cause like. I don't know, to me, I've noticed that anytime there's cops around, like, traffic becomes a little bit more congested, and it moves a little bit better, but it it, 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 it creates a lot of, like, congestion, but, but just because, you know, everybody's like, oh, shit, like, let me not get pulled over, and because, like, there's, you don't have any of that, like, south of the 10, except for, like, those smaller back road highways, um, because you, you don't have a whole lot more of that everybody just treats it like a fucking drag shirt so it's pretty it, 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 it's nice um 
it's nice too because once you see the first three speed traps yeah that's all the cops in arizona so you know you're good to speed after that yeah <laughs> basically yeah <laughs> yeah well and, and what's interesting especially like with where you live it feels like it's going to take a lot longer but really you're only in the city for like 20 minutes to get no, to the freeway definitely. and then it's just a straight shot um for me i've kind of gotten like desensitized to like long drives just from between going to texas california mm -hmm. and like now like you know an hour drive for me is like the same as like a 20 minute drive and then like f like five hours to me to get to san diego feels like two hours now that's pretty nuts actually yeah i mean it's a <laughs> my car's definitely so feeling it. do you still because that's a lot of time mm-hmm Dude, what are you I, thinking about? So here's the here's the thing actually that uh one of my friends from Texas came up, which I still haven't uploaded that video. <laughs> but he came up he came up to visit from Texas and so we um, wasted a lot of gas for nothing. It sounds like. Well, no, I I got the video, <laughs> I got the footage, I just haven't uploaded it yet. <laughs> so that's my bad. But um, but no, like I I was telling him because he was like, dude, we went from we went to like Phoenix, Tucson, San Diego, um. Where did we go? We went we went to like this other um part in California, I forgot um what it was called. But then we went there, I'm back and like just went to like four different cities in yeah. the span of like, you know, four days. Five days. <laughs> yeah. We were dude, we were on like tour. It was pretty badass. Yeah. And but like that was one of the things that we were talking about because he was like, dude, it, it, we did the math, dude. Literally a whole out of like the four or five days he was here, one day had basically been us in the car so he was telling me he's like dude like you do like uh, you know he was like i'm only here for like th this amount of time you do this like on the regular like and he asked me the same question and i was just kind of telling him like honestly that's where i think i do a lot of like my um like development kind of like research homework and shit like that because a lot of people would kind of just fill the time with music and it's like yeah it's nice because you kind of like you know just vibing right but <clears throat> I feel like it gets to a certain point where, and I, you know, maybe you've experienced this too, where like you already feel like you've listened to the songs, where you kind of like want something a little bit more stimulating, especially yeah. if it's like a longer drive. Um, for me, I, anytime I'm doing like a long trip, like if I'm going from like, you know, here to Phoenix or here to Tucson, yeah, I might be listening to music for the whole time, but still like an hour is a pretty good time to like get something done. That's and a, a lot of my, like, I think anxieties come from not being able to be productive. And so then uh, in those drives is kind of when I take the time to um, like listen to podcasts, um, audio books, and like literally do like all of these books here, except for like the Tom Clancy ones, um, are books that I've read. Well, and that's a lie. And this one, because this one's like my newest one that I'm going to get, or this well, this one's the newest one I got, but like everything else I've read. Mm -hmm. And like, on, like, I think this one and... My mom has my other books, but like those two books are the only two books I've listened on, like the audiobooks. Oh, okay, a lot of those, okay. a, a lot of those, or a lot of that time, like reading or listening to that, uh, came from like those drives. Um, That's kind of nice because I feel like a lot of people, when they have excess times, you know, a lot of excess time mm -hmm. on their hand, they'll start to spiral on accident yeah it doesn't always have to be bad but i feel like most of the time people kind of sh offshoot in that wrong direction yeah and they develop <clears throat> coping mechanisms and they're usually okay. not good you know they're usually like like drinking too much or, oh yeah you know like maybe going out too much or whatever it is shopping a lot of people they get addicted to shopping yeah so that's kind of that's kind of neat to hear of a a healthy coping mechanism that it sounds like you naturally developed you know well so so as far as like listening to podcasts and you know audiobooks that kind of did take a little bit i will say like about like around actually even like senior year of of um high school was when i started going to phoenix a lot more and because i was able to drive i would drive myself there um and initially it was like music um and and how do I say it, it was interesting because it was like music, but it was just like a background sound and I would always like be thinking. Yeah. But it wasn't that spiral 
that like like you're talking about it was actually like self reflection i guess where it was like okay like you know how did this week go how did this month go what did i think about this situation it was like a mixture of like it was like um controlled overthinking you can call it because you know how like you're, you know yeah. you'll be thinking late at night like fuck why did i do that thing like three years back it would be something like that but then it would be instead of it being like regretful it would be like whoa how could this situation have been different like what could i have done on my part or like was it even in my control to be able to do that um and and so okay. from there it kind of like stemmed to like reflecting on myself and then once not that like you know i figured myself out so i don't need any more development but it, it got from like okay i've become so knowledgeable with myself what can i learn to then you know continue that growth and that that pace to where my knowledge and basically I like feeling dumb like I like and that's why I enjoy your company too is because you're so like wise like dude if, if this dude needs to <laughs> start his own that. this dude needs to start his own thing with just like the experience he has in life just because like with you I, I feel like you have so much more wisdom on me just in general that then that's why like I like hanging out with you because I feel like I like leave with something new or like you know sometimes like you end up learning something from me which is oh, nice definitely. but I feel like I said through those podcasts, through those audiobooks, that's kind of where I was able to feel like a little bit more dumb because it's like, we'll say like in terms of um, wealth and getting money, like I, it's like if there's already a formula out there, why would you not like try to take from that, apply it to what you can do in your life, yeah. and then you know see the see the the consequences from there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it it mainly started out as like <clears throat> a time for self reflection, and I, even now, like I use. Um, driving and like soon with the motorcycle too like especially with these back roads over here like uh, highway 77 79 yeah. 60 um, it, it'll be nice because it, it's almost like a form of meditation and yeah. even like when I was back in the city too um, I would go like do you know what the loop is I'm talking about like Tango Verde loop area or what so the it's 50 mile stretch no it's like um, it's like a bike path that follows along the washes yeah, it's 50 miles. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, you can, shit. You can walk on it. It goes, like, Rialto area. goes yeah. through Camino Seco Wash. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay. So, so there, like, I would go on my bike a lot. And, like, I, I remember... I got a funny story about that wash. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, shit. So, um, but, yeah, like, I would go on that bike a lot. Or, like, I would go biking on there a lot. And that's, like, where, again, a lot of, like, my self-reflection... It was really just another form of meditating for me, which yeah. was nice. But, uh what 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 happened to you <laughs> what happened to me is so you know four loco is kind of like <laughs> it's kind of like a step like a stepsister in beverly hills everyone's got a story of like meeting them making sweet love People find out about it, and then there's throw up everywhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, it's one of those. So, yeah. first time I actually ever had it, I was out there with a friend, and we were just walking the loop. We, we do that a lot. We like to go out and walk. Um, it's what we did when we were younger, you know, because neither of us could drive. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just actually walking through and i don't think people do it enough anymore but if you just walk through your city even just your neighborhood you learn so much oh yeah you know what time people come out what they do for a living you know different things like that just because you know the, the you know hello how are you or that lady likes to garden or the you know that old vet on his porch uh -huh. will start telling you about something you know just little things like that right so we were out walking the loop and uh every time we would stop at a gas station, like veer off, grab a four loco, and then go back on. Yeah. It was in the sun for the first half, because we walked for probably oh, six hours, just going, going, going. And <laughs> I'll tell you what, dude, I had three, and then my buddy couldn't get through his. So then I took his, and... You know how whenever you take, like, tequila or whiskey or something like that, first two are rough, the third one starts to feel familiar, the fourth one's, like, your best friend. You know, yeah. like, they're just going down. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, these don't get like that. The first one is, like, oh, you know, oh, God, you know, and then, and then the fourth one, like, your throat burns because the battery acid content in there starts to really fuck with you. Yeah, oh, that's sulfur, yeah. So... I got so sick 
I mean, I turned, we got picked up down there by Tucson Mall, started like way, way earlier. Holy sh! <laughs> from, and, from like. Oh, dude, just <laughs> wandered. Just wandered. Holy bro. shit, yeah. And so I was back at my house, and another buddy of mine was trying to help me out. <clears throat> like, wake me up. Hey, hey, you doing okay? And I don't remember, but I was just, you know, green, like. You know, trying to talk, and they kept like, you know, hey, are you okay? You okay? And I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I'm good. <sighs> you know, turn, turn green again, like, oh god. Yeah. Yeah. So, I know what watch you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. That damn. That's. Dude, you're a unit. If, if there's anybody you don't want to go like drinking with, it's this guy, because he's like, I, I literally, I've hung out with other like, you know, like six foot plus, two twenty <laughs> plus people, and. They, they're, they're like, they're units themselves, but you are like a monstrosity. <laughs> like, I don't know how your, your stomach is just Mary Poppins first, <laughs> dude. Cause like, they're like, everything that goes in there is just like gone by the next like five seconds, which is insane to me, but that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so another topic I kind of did want to, want to bring up cause I feel like this is something that, you know, I, I feel like when talking about like, um, how do I say it? Like, like society, kind of like what's going on around us. Mm -hmm. Um, not a lot, a lot of people like what they'll do is, you know, kind of like what I was telling you with, with Will earlier, um, where they'll hear something, they'll kind of take it. Yeah. But they don't ever like, you know, think about it or they don't ever do the research or they don't ever kind of like formulate their own thing to, you know, to, um, come to a conclusion about what they think about it. They just kind of yeah. take it and then from there just either repeat it or just kind of go against it because it makes them feel weird. Um, what kind of like what do you think about the this idea of how do i say it this this like modern i don't want to just say like modern society but it is a, a very common thing now with the idea of like sensitivity and you know not being able to like bust people's balls mm -hmm. and which you know before because i'm not gonna lie like i i grew up around primarily like women so yeah i would i would consider myself like pretty sensitive just in terms of like as for for a guy i would consider myself sensitive but i you know if you also like talk shit to me I, I I have the confidence enough to know like you, yeah. you're not actually like you know shit talking me you're just like busting my balls right but now and, and even as someone who probably would have been offended by that a couple of years back like now I kind of just like whatever but like there's still people that like you just say like you know one thing like the way you and me call each other like googly at bitch is like <laughs> you know another man's like oh like yeah. how dare you so kind of like how 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 do you feel about this you know state that we're in where you, you really just can't ever either like say a joke like i feel like i don't know if you've ever experienced this because i know you're not the type of person but like there's been times where i thought i was pretty like out of pocket and i go out with that one person in public and i'm like oh shit like I, like i'm pretty tight and i even got, almost got a little worried because i'm like damn like this dude is fucking yeah. unca like unhinged right. i'm like i might get in i might go to jail for this dude right. like saying this uh do you have like like, kind of, like, what are your thoughts on that? Well, that's a tough one. Mm -hmm. But the first thing that came to mind, honestly, is, like, I think it boils down really to the relationships that you pick. Okay. Um, as a, for instance, like, what you said earlier about what's, like, like so beautiful about our friendship is we usually almost always take something from one another mm -hmm. and I think everyone has such a <clears throat> me 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 idea yeah so I think if I said that to someone else take something from each other they would get defensive what are you taking from me I didn't know I gave you something I didn't you know or, or like that's it. that's like conditional that's manipulative yeah. that's yeah well how do I know that I'm taking enough or you're taking enough or you know they start to just kind of think stuff like that mm -hmm. and that's where it's all wrong yeah um I say this all the time, I hope that nothing bad happens to those that I love, but I still wish them a hard time. Yeah. Uh, that's the only way that you can really progress or get anywhere. And I, I don't know the Bible verse, but I know that there are, you know, that is a Bible verse. Um, it's something along the lines of friends are like blades they should sharpen each other or they have no purpose mm -hmm. you know it's, some, it's yeah. something along it, those it's lines. like um like men are like iron as uh as one 
I know what you're saying. Like yeah. basically, like men are like iron. Um, as one sharpens each other, so make that, each other stronger. That's what you're supposed to do. You yeah, know, you're supposed to. If you're in a relationship and you find that you're never uncomfortable, mm-hmm. that you're never challenged, and that you never feel urgency, it's not a real relationship. Yeah, there should be points in time where, because I mean, think about it. You need help at 3 a.m., right? You call for somebody. That's going to make you uncomfortable. That's a that's a big responsibility, you know. You yeah. there, there's there's a lot of different things to it, but you'd still call them, right? Mm-hmm. So that's a good relationship. That's something where you feel, you know, that 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 love and that that urgency with each other that you can accomplish things that you can, you know, someone that has goals, individual goals, goals for a relationship. We've talked several times about how we want to figure out how to make money together yeah. separate anyway so I feel as though you have expectations for me mm-hmm. and I have expectations for you those are good mm-hmm. you know because then when you start to not do those I mean wh- what can everyone use more of money yeah so if I'm sitting there and I have this expectation on you to hey hey what are you doing you know where's where's the, where's your cash at where what are you doing to be productive? How are you accomplishing the things that we talk about all the time? Mm-hmm. Is that a little uncomfortable? I'd say so. Yeah. But look at what you're getting out of it. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot to there's a lot that you can take from that and that that willingness to make someone uncomfortable because like you said, society now, everyone tiptoes so much, they're so uncomfortable, they can't talk shit, they can't, you know. Honestly, I would say functionally socialize Mm -hmm. because that's what it really is. Yeah. You know, if you have a really, really good work environment, um, then you can, well, work environment's a little bit more tricky because it can, it can become inappropriate. Yeah. But, you know, a good boss has a tight rein on the situation where even when they're not there, you're still trying to do good work for them, right? Mm -hmm. So, a friendship is like that in the same regard. I'm not hanging out with you, but I still know you're going to make good decisions. I know that there'll be progress when I come back. Like, you kind of have to think about things like that. Think about good relationships that you have, and then apply that to whatever social construct you're in. Is it is it love? Is it you know? money is it just experience like depending on what you're all at Mm -hmm. what you want out of each situation but that to make it a relationship i think it still really does need a couple of those you know key things uncomfortability urgency you know just different goals otherwise you're not really doing anything and then you get really really bored and then you spiral like i said i think there's nowhere for you to go there's no you know so and I don't know how anyone learns anything if you don't get uncomfortable. Math class. I'm sorry, but you're you're so weird if you sit there and you're like, oh yes, fucking fractions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're like sitting there getting all jazzed up about yeah. shit that you don't understand. Yeah. That's all hypothetical, right? But it's uncomfortable. You know, the teacher calls on you, raise your hand. You're like, oh shit, you know, there's a lot that goes into it, yep. but you still learned, right? Mm-hmm. You thought, oh shit, I'm going to fail this test. If I don't get through it, if I don't study, if I don't do this, the, the consequence, you know? Right. So it's just learning. The relationships make you learn every single, you know, thing that you do, whether, you know, it's fun, school, work, like that's, that's really what it's about. And like you said, you need to you know be stimulated Mm -hmm. so i think so long as you're being stimulated and and have goals then that's really what it should should be about and and i don't think that there's anything wrong um kind of like you said with the whole sensitivity thing um i think a lot of guys will shy away from the idea that you know they can be sensitive the whole like real men don't cry thing I think that's bullshit because especially like personal personally speaking um there's a lot of situations where i wish i was more of a man to cry Mm -hmm. 
it takes a lot of courage, confidence, and self you know, perseverance to sit there and face your feelings. Yeah. It is so hard to do. Like there's there's different like passings in my family or choices that I've made or things that like still um, where I can kind of relate, like in the car, I'll sit there and instead of replaying it, um, I find that that never does me any good and it does give me a bunch of anxiety. Mm -hmm. What I do is I try and make a completely different scenario that hasn't happened yet and then place myself in that and then think about what I would do. Okay. Because I can't change what I already did and that's just a memory. But if I imagine what happens next time, because I'll probably encounter something similar to it, but not exactly the same. Mm -hmm. It's kind of fun to like put yourself in that pilot seat and see where you would go. Yeah. So I kind of like to do that. Um, Interesting. And the more in touch you are with your emotions and kind of like your sensitivity, yeah. I think it lets you read the room. So I think a real, a real man is uh, competent, confident, but sensitive. Because if you're sensitive, you can read the room, know what's going on around you, but if you're confident, you can still command the room. Mm -hmm. But in a way where people actually respect you and, and want to hear what you have to say, because if you just show up in there, like, you know, throwing out mouth and orders, acting like a dick, and, you know, maybe you're making Sally really upset over here, maybe Ricky wants to punch you in the face, you know, like, or nothing's going to get done. Yeah. But if you're able to come in and, you know, hey, hope everyone's having a good morning, Let's get all of our stuff done so come lunchtime we can all take it easy. You know, different things like mm -hmm. that. All of the figurehead people that I know, love and respect, I think are really in tune with their emotions and with other people's emotions. Yeah. And I think that's, I could be wrong, but that's a form of sensitivity. So I think sensitivity is something that a lot of people should strive for even more, especially as a man. Yeah. It doesn't make you, you know, like like a bitch or girly or, or anything like that I just think it makes you more apt to I don't know I guess do anything mm -hmm. lead connect like it's just yeah it's really important so yeah I think more, sh more people should keep their sensitivity but use it correctly yeah. don't use it to get yourself out of things use it to get yourself in more things yeah. and then do better because of it right I guess dude well. I yeah that's that's right. <laughs> fucking so well put dude that, that was awesome yeah. Um, I thought of like so many sub like topics we could get into. The first thing I do want to say is like, um, like from a biblical standpoint, like Jesus was seen as the perfect person, right? Because he was sinless. He was God in the form of man. Even he cried. Yeah. And I, like I feel like that says a lot too. When like not only the creator of life, but like the perfect, the person, the exact person who you want to be mm -hmm. also cried. Yeah. And was a man. That in itself, I feel like is able to just like like you said, like debunk the whole like machismo men don't cry whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it um so i just wanted to throw that in there but also um with or excuse me so so going back to like the very beginning of what was said um a mutual friend of ours i actually got around to hanging out with her last week yeah um and she, like she, one thing we were kind of talking about and that she said was she feels like she's at a point in life where her friends kind of feel like more of her family than you know her family does Absolutely. and i think that's also like the beautiful thing with friendships mm -hmm. is that it's basically like a sub family that you create before you have a family yeah if that makes sense um and I, I i would see that because i've gone to a point now with like with you with will with all of my friends i like I, it's literally become such a habit now to be like you know that like when people when i talk about you guys it's like like you know oh yeah i'm hanging out with my friend oh yeah i'm hanging out with my brother because that's literally like what it's like and it's so fast dude yeah. it, and it, it it's, it's incredible it, it's awesome and like you know you me will like we've gone to the point too where we're like you know uh, before we get off the phone just like yay hey, like love you bro yeah because uh, it's it's like it's like a, a genuine thing like of love and I, I don't think that has to deal with in any way to holy shit <laughs> with you know just uh sexuality but i think that's also just like love is just like a very very like bonding emotion that i think it's like if you feel that for someone it doesn't necessarily mean like you have a crush on them or anything so it's like you know, it's the way you would your brother your mother your sister you know whoever um there's a lot that goes into it you have to put in so much effort be in so many situations and just i think spend so much time to get to that point where you can say 
I love you. You know, like yeah. that shows that shows progress and accomplishment. Because um, loving is not easy. Mm-hmm. It's it's really hard. It, you get well, like we're like I just said, any good relationship makes you uncomfortable. It does all these things. So it's it's hard to go through. But what you get out of it is just that. Because yeah. I feel one hundred percent how you feel. Like my, you know, your family, like your blood. I'm sure there's so many people that could relate to this, but you are stuck with them. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the time, unfortunately so. Mm-hmm. When you work a lot, like, you know, I can be doing doubles, this, pick up side jobs, whatever. When you love someone, you can always make time for them. Oh, yeah. What does that say? You know, you only have so much time in the day. You're going out of your way. To be with them. Um, oh, yeah. Like certain people that even like I work with fucking shout out to Caden and Wyatt and like those people there like even just at prep I work with these assholes all day right (laughs) laughing making money together just living it up and I love them so much that I we we both will will go out of our way to see each other outside of work Mm -hmm. that's how you know the difference you know because like even just thinking back to school days and anyone can relate to this you know that chick or that guy that gets you through fourth period. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but when you see them in the hall at lunch, do you hang out? Do you even wave? Hell no. Yeah, you're not true. friends. Yeah. They're your distraction to get you through fourth hour. You yeah. know? So whenever you're giving your time away, which is arguably your most valuable resource, yeah. that is love. And that's how you make that family unit. You mm-hmm. know, so that if something were to happen, you know, God forbid to me and you know, my things or I don't have kids, but when I do have kids, um, they'll be taken care of. Mm-hmm. That's almost, you're almost building that, that net, that reassurance, you know, yeah. and people will do that. Um, and so that, that is really, really awesome. And I think the idea of family needs to be modernized in that regard a little bit. Mm-hmm. There's people that are like, so, so hardcore on the blood thing. Yeah. Um, of course you need to you know respect your mom, your dad, all that good stuff. But right. Um, not everyone has that. And if you made it less weird and made it seem like it just wasn't so unnormal and then not find a bunch of reasons to justify it, but just a different method, you know, like I've had several father figures in Mm -hmm. my life. Should I get a free pass to, to act up and be a fool just because I don't have the main one? Yeah. No, but it's okay to, to still look in a positive light and I can be like, you know, like I feel like a lot of people when I say that they hear, I've had several father figures. No, like when I say it, I'm like, I've been so fortunate to have had several father figures now that have shown me many different things, you know? So it's like, I think really, really old school not to accept that, that, that family net that you're talking about with your friends, with, you know, like even neighbors I've lived with, you know, um, people and and different neighbors and things and just developed relationships that I didn't think I could get so close this this one older lady dude I, I want to be like half as cool as her when I'm her age <laughs> she rides a trike motorcycles no she's like 77 been riding motorcycles Damn. for 50 years <laughs> and while we, we were living together like after I got off work and I wasn't doing anything I'd like I wonder what Patricia's doing. Like, <laughs> Just go with yeah. her. Yeah. And never in a million years would I think that like a, I don't know, 70 something year old woman would be mm-hmm. one of my closest friends. Yeah. You know, like that's incredible. That's an incredible thought. And I'm so thankful that I got to experience, you know, yeah. I make it sound like she's like dead and gone, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure I'll see her. See you or go to lunch, but you know, I'm just thankful that I got to experience that. No, you know? yeah, that's that's so. that's that's fucking awesome, and especially yeah. too, I think that's the beautiful thing about friends too is it's almost like those family members that you never got to experience. Mm-hmm. So, like you said, like with those father figures, um, they might have served something that maybe like your your biological father wouldn't have been able to teach you. Not yeah. just because he wasn't capable of it, but maybe it was just they were knowledgeable in something yeah. else. Same with like you know. Um, women who uh, served as like a uh, mother figure uncles and cousins whatever mm-hmm. um and, and and i think that's interesting too is it's because not everybody's going to be able to know everything so yeah. that's that's where like like we were saying the dynamic of our friendship and this idea that like you get something i get something yeah 
going back to what you said about how people think that's kind of corrupt it, it is it's not so much i i was going to actually talk about this i don't think it's more so like the fact that i give you some or excuse me that i get something you get something i think it's more so i leave you with something and you leave me with something yeah so it's not so much me asking for it it's just me like hey by the way here's this yeah um like you want to right it feels good You're right like, oh man i'm glad i could could you know boost you up yeah, and, and it makes you feel good because you're like damn i'm really glad i spent like all that time or hours like doing this thing and, and and that's the beautiful thing about it is you're knowledgeable and shit that i don't know and i'm knowledgeable and shit that you don't know but why is that because again we put ourselves in these uncomfortable situations dude, dude i can't tell you how many times i've gotten under my car just like dude the fact that my life is dependent on these two things just holding up this fucking car is insane to me because like even while it, those fucking jacks were on like Maybe not the highest setting, but like on a pretty high setting, mm -hmm. the car's still fucking right here. And I'm like, yo, this is insane. You know what gets me every time? Huh? I'll be driving <clears throat> at like driving at night, and um, <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm already gonna relate to this. Well, I'm sitting there, and it's just two solid lines, right? Mm -hmm. But it's just paint. Oh shit! It's just paint yeah so i'm sitting there and i'm like oh my god this is such a trust system yeah they could just turn a little bit <laughs> and fucking work me so i'm sitting there like thinking that and then i'm like oh shit <laughs> <laughs> you know you're about to become the problem yeah. you're thinking of. that's but, fucking like, hilarious think about that people are yeah. coming like 40 50 this way and you trust just thousands of people on your way home because you're passing and, and, and sometimes like that's just with talking cars like close. equal to your side. That's not even talking about like these semis, which are like mm -hmm. fucking four or five times your size, which easily you'd be fucking disintegrated if like just that one dude is asleep and is like, Shh. but oh, that, yeah, no, <laughs> no, it's insane. Um, tell you what, uh, how how you feel? I know usually every time I drink these, I need to go take a piss. Like, are you are you? I'm doing good so far. Okay, cool. Well, I'm not. I'm gonna go use the little boys' room real quick. Um, quick intermission too. Uh, I forgot to introduce my dog Nacho. Um, so this is Nacho. He's my little like twelve pound chihuahua, little fat shit. Uh, but also while we're here, oh, Avery, what's that in your hand? They're not giving you money. <laughs> <laughs> they they want. They're not yet. They will be. No, see what you need to do is send them a strongly worded email, and you need to degrade them in the first half. And then slowly make it sound like you actually enjoy their product, and then reel it right back in at the end. Can I'm gonna like give you a little template. Mm -hmm. I want you to say everything in my name, and then when they start sponsoring me, I'll give you like thirty percent of my earnings. I don't know. You're gonna have to get past the crying stage first with them, because that's what happens. You make them feel loved, and then you. So this is Celsius. <laughs> 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 now we'll talk about later. I thought oh, you said her name was Celeste. <laughs> Not on camera. <laughs> okay. Now that we're back, um, the next uh, the next topic. Oh, so one thing that you said just a little bit before the cut was. Um, regarding like uh what do you oh, i forgot it i already forgot what you said it was regarding like masculinity though um kind of like what your takes on what a man should be um how do you feel about like the idea of like toxic masculinity um well i mean i don't know it's i i, I like to simplify things so <clears> it's kind of like you know, for other people, apples to oranges, but to me, it's like, well, are you a dick or are you not a dick? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's very, very simple. You can have all of those, like, I don't know, qualities of a man and then, but, but being a dick isn't a quality of a, a man, at least not a good one. Right. You, know? you have to be assertive and you have to... You know have certain characteristic traits that are a little bit harder you mm -hmm. know, but I don't I think I think true tos toxic masculinity would be actually putting women down you know like if you're 
if you have something in mind and it's it's harmful, mm-hmm. then that's when I would say it's you it's know more toxic. like toxic. Like, and, and I mean actually harmful. If you're going out of your way to think like some horrible thing or, or say something like unironically that wouldn't make you know uh, you know whatever woman or something laugh too, you know, because yeah. jokes are jokes. Um, and every joke is funny because it has a little bit of truth to it. So you have to have truth, but it, I think it's how you like deliver it, right? You know? um, and, and with what intent? Are you just poking fun at a situation, trying to make everyone relaxed and laugh, or you know, are you like you know, reaming in there and yeah. kind of freaking out? So I think that toxic masculinity exists, but I don't think it exists how people say it does i think they take it out of context so if you mind answering like what 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 i guess how would you define toxic masculinity and then what do you believe to be the how do i say it um the more common definition for it or i guess the way like other people would describe it as so ask that again because i didn't so so what's I didn't like follow up. so because you say like you believe uh, like there is toxic masculinity, just yeah. maybe not in the same way as everybody else, right? Or like your definition might be different. What how what would be your perception of it? Um, versus like what like do you think you'd be able to explain how everybody else would see it? Um, I guess toxic masculinity, what I think it actually is, and I, I mean w- when I was younger, I would even say that. I was guilty of it, and what I mean by that is, I think a, a kind of another thing that people do, um, growing up as a young man without um, a father, like a proper, you know, my own dad in place, you try to make up for that, mm-hmm. but in such extremes, you know, like what would a what would a grown man do? Yeah, and then you amplify that as like an eleven or twelve year old times 10 so then it just comes off like awful yeah um you know like just trying to i don't know whether it be like trying to be a bro but then you're just like always way too much or or again like i said just the general mistreat of woman in in a in a condescending way Mm -hmm. i think that applies too um so i would say that's what it actually is trying to uh reinforce a stigma that is only portrayed in like you know movies and media and such yeah um i would say that's what's like the you know the 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 meat of it um like i guess i guess like if you're a pimp in vegas you're probably a toxic you know masculine man you know like um things like that like actual bad traits traits Uh you know like that that don't really have redeeming qualities like i mean you you can get in trouble your dad will yell at you like hey don't do that and then you don't get hurt though you know are your feelings a little hurt because you just got yelled at yeah but i have all my fingers because i threw the firecracker (laughs) you know like yeah thanks dad i'm glad you said something yeah so um yeah i think it's just that whole like sensitive thing what you're talking about people misinterpret um consequence with maybe um, like emotion yeah yeah. Um, they just kind of misconstrued the process of, of things and how they should actually work mm-hmm. um, if that I don't know if that answers but yeah no that, that's kind of exactly what I was looking for um, I, I just say that because I remember like a couple years back this actually this was like during quarantine um, one of my friends like uh, me and my friends were, were a part of like the how do I say it like after school or after you know, like on the weekend or whatever you know we would like get on a call and then just like play fucking mario kart which i mean i know we haven't played i have a switch here it's not charged but dude <laughs> we fuck around dude i literally i can't I'm not, I'm not exaggerating when i say this dude i literally cannot be beat in mario kart <laughs> like i say this yeah. with so much confidence because i just have not bit like every every race there might be like one or two races where I don't come in first, but dude, like I come out on top every time. That's not important. What I'm, <laughs> why I'm saying this is because like we would play games over, um, over quarantine and while, <laughs> and um, you're gonna be so disappointed, man. 
we're gonna play. And we're both heterosexual, so I can't rock your world that way. But I'm gonna <laughs> fuck you up in Mario Kart. Oh shit! I'm coming for well, that. Well, okay, bro. dude. I need to. I need to get, dude. I'm gonna see if I can get Will back on an episode and like. I'll, I'll take you up with me to Phoenix, cause like <laughs> then afterwards we can have like a dispute. Or I can even like record it, like fucking, cause Will talks so much shit and then gets fucking like dick slapped <laughs> every time. Like, dude, he'll he'll be like, dude, you fucking suck at Mario Kart. Like, I beat you three times in the last month. Like, what are you talking about? But the reason I say that is because I remember we were like playing games and like it was so fucking funny, cause this actually reminds me of how what you're talking about, like on those long drives where you just contemplate shit. Like, we were just fucking. You know, like slapping each other in Mario Kart, and then like, I forgot how it came up, but someone brought up toxic masculinity because it was like quarantine. There's a whole bunch of shit going on, and my friend at the time, who I kind of saw as like a pretty masculine dude, like would always, um, you know, like be physically fit. Like he'd always work out. He would be very like charismatic, take care of himself. This and the other, like, he was never not with a girl, put it that way, and so, like, I was, I kind of saw him as, like, a, you know, like, not, like, a man's man, per se, but, like, a pretty, like, a debonair, yeah. um, and then, like, I remember, I, uh, someone brought up, like, the idea of toxic masculinity, and I asked him, I was, like, I was, like, do you, like, like, what do you think about that, and he told me, like, he kind of believes in it, we didn't really say or discuss more about what the context of it was, like, what each person's definition of it was, at that time, it was just, like, labeled, yeah. toxic masculinity it was just the word being thrown around that makes and sense. then his his girlfriend you know especially was like oh yeah no like it's definitely a real thing and it like kind of rubbed me off in the wrong way because i'm like I'm, I'm like i don't know like i think masculinity in itself my definition at that time was like masculinity itself isn't toxic it's just the users of it who define if it's toxic or not yeah which is kind of i mean it's kind of vague but i think that's also something that not a lot of people were like kind of coming to conclusion with they just kind of were throwing the idea that masculinity itself was toxic i think it's a trigger word that doesn't that didn't need to be perpetuated in the first place Mm -hmm. because like i said I, i really do think it's just the difference of being a dick or not being a good man or not you know yeah. a good man respects women holds the door you know takes care of them a good man makes himself as useful as possible to not only himself but those around that he cares for yeah. that's a good man that's you know good traits just like i you know and, and this isn't fully for me to say because I, i'm not a woman mm-hmm. so I, my opinion on it isn't as valid as an actual woman's would be so i'm not trying to like you know put force anything on anyone but you know in my opinion like a a a good woman would be someone that's you know really caring or or even level-headed sometimes like a lot of a lot of really smart and powerful women in my life you know have been oftentimes the most Mm level-headed in any circumstance so i would say those are just like good traits of a you know of a woman you know it's just i don't know i guess people just try to lock stuff in so much but realistically a lot of the traits could be applied to both and and again really it's just whether you're a good person or not yeah i think it's kind of silly to have to categorize it so specifically and fine-tune and i think a lot of people just do that to prove a point you know Mm -hmm. um if you're able to categorize something and then make a deal out of it then you can I guess perpetuate it into something it's not. You know, is is Timmy a toxic masculine guy, or can you just say Timmy's a dick? I'm not going to hang out with Timmy. Right. Well, and, and I think the reason I asked it was because I know there was a point in time when uh, a lot of this was just purely based off of observation. Either like I I say it with confidence, but I don't like actually know. But my thing with like with whenever it seemed like toxic masculine was being thrown around, mm-hmm. it was usually because someone was being held accountable for something. And, you know, the person on the receiving end didn't like that. So then they'd be like, oh, you're just being toxic. That makes, yeah, that makes sense. And I, I think that's wrong, too, because they're, again, like, a, a good quality, you know, in, in, in people. Mm-hmm. I don't even want to say just a man anymore, just in people. is like, you know, if you did something wrong, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done A, I should have done B instead. Yeah. Next time I'll try and do, you know be instead of a like like i said you know and just do it better so yeah you have to be okay with um being wrong for sure and yeah. then just do your best to 
it, it, it's hard because I don't think you can really make stuff up to people per se. I think that you just need time to let it run its course and then not do it again. You know, it's like a respect thing of I'm going to have the mental fortitude and care to make sure that I don't put you through that again. Mm -hmm. And then you, that's also a way I, I believe of genuinely being sorry. Yeah. You know, if you're, if you, you can say, you know, I'm sorry a million times. And then if you just keep turning around and doing it, I mean, think of like a, a shitty relationship, right? You get cheated on. I'm sorry. Then you get cheated on again. I'm sorry. And then you get cheated on again. Like what? Why did it take an itchy dick for you to leave? Yeah. You know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, for, for sure. There's there's a lot of validity with that, too. I was, uh, this brings up, like, kind of, like, another question. And this is, like, very, very, like... I know I don't have the fucking answer. But it's, like, you know... Um, oh, fuck, how would I even ask this? Why... I'll say this. Like, why do you believe... Or, um, you know, if you have, like, a formulation on this idea, um, why do you believe that we've kind of gone away from being accountable? Because, you know, looking at it before, or, like, if you look at, like, the generation before us, mm -hmm. um, uh, like, you know, the, the idea there is, like, oh, it's your fault, it's your fault, or it's my fault, it's my fault. Why is it now that we're so tailored with the idea that it's nobody's fault? So, that, like, kind of going back to, like, that victim mentality that we were talking about a little bit, um, where, you know, everybody wants to either put the blame on something else or where, like, they're never in the wrong for anything that they do. Because it sucks and it's really hard. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I, for every bit and much that I love being wrong because then I have the opportunity to learn. I hate it equally as much. Yeah. It's just about understanding what I have to take out of that, that moment of being wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's a lot of people just got distracted by that fact and it's really easy to lose sight of. Yeah. Um, so, and it takes a lot of, I've been seeing this everywhere and I can't agree with it more. But motivation really doesn't mean anything. It's the discipline to do it over and over after you've lost your motivation. Yeah. And I think that same thing applies about just, I guess, honesty. Um, <laughs> even when you don't want to be honest, you know, like day to day, uh, you need to. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're going to lose sight of that. And then it's, it's going to get really hard and things degrade. So... But sometimes it's really hard to be honest, you know, like, I, I can't really, do you want to hang out? Honestly, no, no, I don't. Yeah. I feel sick. I feel tired, you know, like there's just little situations that you could be put in that it would be a lot easier to kind of like, I don't know, like get out of, if you mm -hmm. will. Um, well, and, and I mean, to just like jump in real quick, I feel like that's honestly why, like that to, I just personally, just based off of my experience too. Uh, and it's been something we've heard throughout our lives like honesty is the best policy mm -hmm. i think that's why my relationships in life are so fortified is because i can tell you like you know like for example you hit me up you call me up like hey bud do you want to do you want to hang out Duh, dude honestly like i fucking i work 60 hours this week i gotta make these videos mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm a little tired right now i kind of just want to like lay low all right bud no worries and that's literally how it goes. But then, like, you know, uh, any other point, too, it's it's always, like, you know, it, it's never, like, how do I say it? it? It's almost just, it's not even, like, ripping the Band-Aid off. It's just so much easier of a process to just be either straight up no or straight up yes. Or sometimes, like, you know, again, holding each other accountable. I know if I was fucking up, I have a bunch of people to tell me I'm doing that. Yeah. Which then is kind of also why I feel the need to not do dumb shit that's gonna get me in trouble because then I know I'm fucking gonna have everybody on my ass after it not just that but given my reputation too if I do some dumb shit and if it doesn't follow like like for example riding a motorcycle or being in a car if you if I don't get in an accident like if I get in an accident it's like okay what was he doing oh he's drinking and driving I'm fucking dumbass why would you drink and drive or yeah. if it was like oh he was on You're a track you're supposed to drink and drive at the stop sign you take a swig and then you drive <laughs> For, for comedic reasons, this is all a joke. None of we, none of, and everything we're saying is, is a joke from from this point on until I cut. Anyway, um, 
No, but yeah, for example, like that, or, you know, it's like, oh, he got in an accident, what was he doing? Oh, he was on this track, he was, like, you know, yeah. doing a demo. Oh, okay, then that's not that bad. But that's the thing, too, is it, a lot of it, like, I feel like that's, that's especially when your relationships are so good, or, like, I'll, like, I'll be honest, too, when going back to, like, the thing with women, I've never understood the idea of, like, and, and this is also just because, like, I wouldn't want it done to me, but, like, the idea of, like, leading women on, or, like, you know, yeah like having them chasing their own tail like i'll be straight up with a girl like hey i like you i want to see where this goes or hey i like you but either i'm not in a place where i want to be in a relationship or you know lastly like hey i'm just in lust with you like something that i've learned um that i feel is just so priceless to me is in any situation that you do um a lot of people if you just start going on at mm -hmm. them or with the topic or something you will evoke a response of <coughs> defense yeah you can completely avoid that by just giving the other person respect yeah and the best way that i've found out to do that is like if i know i need to address something or i know i need to talk about something you know i'll i'll, I'll call or text or whatever the method may be and i'll say hey um i have what could be a difficult conversation when might you have time for it mm -hmm. and that you will get such a different response and so much more progress simply because you allowed them to pull up a chair yeah. you know cuz now they're thinking you know what if right now isn't a good time right and they need you know two days then they're mentally ready they can think about it they've gotten there and then it's like okay i'm walking into this not mm -hmm. You know, not like, like opening the door, mutual, and, then, and then it's like someone's at you. Uh -huh. you're, you're meeting them. Yeah. So that's really nice, um, and that's helped me greatly. Another thing that I've kind of noticed through through just different points in time is there's such a ex there, there's an expression that's used so so much. The horse isn't dead; it's pulverized. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I hate the saying walk a mile in his shoes mm -hmm. so much no one wants to do that you yeah. know you do that and your feet are going to smell like shit <laughs> it's not going to be fun you're not going to take anything from it the, yeah. the expression's kind of a joke but there's something really really close to it mm -hmm. walk his path yeah it's Ooh, not about like the shoes that. anything because think about it you can walk in the same direction as someone you can have that same struggle mm -hmm. but my eyes aren't your eyes mm -hmm. and my heart isn't your heart so i can relate to you but i can also not understand all of it yeah and that's what makes it so nice is to to feel understood but it's still uniquely your own experience mm -hmm. Don't try and take that from someone else make them feel reassured and like hey you know what's going on but we can have the exact same thing happen to us at the exact same time, you know, and it could be way more traumatic for you than it could be for me, yeah. just because of how your brain processes and breaks, you know, breaks certain things down. Mm -hmm. So I, I just really hate that trying to compare, it, and it almost makes it sound like a pissing contest about like who's more sad or who has it worse. Like, mm -hmm. no, like so that I've always, when I say it, you know, like well, what is his path like? Let me walk his path so I can garner you know, understandance of, of what that was like, but still have it be my own experience. I, I like that better just because, like, the idea of, of the shoes versus the path, it makes sense because maybe, like, that man's path is the reason why his shoes are the way they are. Mm -hmm. But instead, it's like, you know, you walk in the shoes, you're like, yeah, these are shitty shoes. Mm -hmm. Well, no shit, that's, like, <laughs> that's what you started off with, but yeah. maybe he started off with, like, these nice pair of shoes, but, you know, given where he was going, like, they fucking, that's... That's the old reliables for him. Yeah, you like you already know <coughs> what that leads to, what yeah. happens. So why not try something different? And like, do it. Uh, I think the theme and moral of this episode is just being uncomfortable, because that's <laughs> that's ultimately yeah. what that goes back to. And I think a lot of our conversations keep like cycling back to this, which is honestly just like um, I think one of the best lessons. And it's something that even I like just wholeheartedly agree with too. By you putting yourself in uncomfortable situations, you're able to grow more. Honestly, that's where I was able to make more money is from taking those opportunities, mm -hmm. meeting like even better people. There's just so much more opportunity because like, it's like, yes, you're comfortable with where you're at, but I think that's why 
you can't fail is because you know you're okay yeah. when you have that idea or that sense of like failure also like fuck like i, I really cannot afford to not do this mm-hmm. and you just have to go all in it's like the saying too like you know burn your ship so that you can't return it, similar to that i i agree with because it's like yeah if you only give yourself the idea or like the the um option of success yeah that's the only way you're gonna go absolutely all right avery fucking thanks a bunch for coming on this shit oh, yeah, dude, like how, how, cool. how'd you feel about this it was super cool yeah. it was super super cool it was fun to talk uh philosophically like that get challenged um i think it's it's interesting because a lot of people crave that you know mm-hmm. uh, that, that like wanting to do that but it's nice to actually do it with someone because i even find myself listening to podcasts that'll um people will be doing that and so many times i've just felt like man i wish i was there so i could ask like my question Mm -hmm. give my response or so i guess it just felt really nice to be able to do that yeah almost like kind of like you like a part of you felt like heard with definitely it makes me want to do it even more i'll say it's nice to to just think think your thoughts and, and go with it yeah um and i have a lot of uh it, it it challenged me to think positive, I think, and I really liked. Really, that. yeah, like, interesting. I liked that takeaway. That was really fun because the more, the more I think, it's, uh, it's in a positive direction, which is really nice. You yeah, know? I haven't always had been able to do that during my life. Yeah, um, but I feel like I was able to do that now. Like even just that whole time, I was like, oh man, this is, this, that's a nice thought, or oh, this is a nice thought, or, um, you know, just hopefully someone else can can relate or, or laugh or you know whatever yeah that's pretty much it okay i did i'm, I'm glad and honestly that's kind of why i felt so um so inspired to start it was because i'm like okay well shit if me you will a bunch of my other like close friends are having like these same conversations ideas yeah if this is what we're doing there, it's not like we're the only fucking five, ten, yeah. however many guys in the world. Like, there's other people who are going to think either similarly or be, you know, find something relatable. Yeah. And I feel like every podcast you see is what some, maybe the youngest person as the host is like 30 years old. Mm-hmm. But there's never really been like someone very youthful having a podcast. Maybe some, but like none to where it's like actually, I don't want to say productive, but like you said, more like yeah. just discussing ideas. It's either like current events, you know, celebrity talk, all, all that stuff, stuff that I would argue and kind of see as like irrelevant. I'd right. say the only other person from that is like I don't know if you know Duke Gomez. His videos are funny as shit, and I can't say it, dude. yeah, dude, it's he <laughs> basically like will fat shame or just like talk about like <laughs> like I won't say who, but like a certain demographic of people and just like shits on them, and like <laughs> it's funny. So, like I'll, I'll show you some of his videos later. You've probably seen him here and there, but like he's probably one of the the, the um, only other people I would say kind of has a similar platform that makes um, sense. to what I want to do. It should be unique and bring because I hear, which is nice. You're like, you know, guy this guy that, but this is starting to sound like a sausage party. So you need to bring a chick on here to bust your balls and <sighs> chop it up with you, bro. I think that's what you're missing right now. I think I, I think there's. How do I say it? So, I think there's only one person I think that's capable of that. Mm -hmm. And you probably know who it is. Or you can get an idea as to who. Because everybody else I know, every other girl I know would either just be like, what the fuck? Or kind of like, not really play. There's maybe one other person, but like, I've only met them through work. And even then, I don't uh, don't know how credible they would be. I see. Like, they don't even seem certain on their ideas. Mm. or beliefs so but like this other person that mutual friend of ours mm. i feel like could could definitely be someone to do that with um we'll see i mean this is the fourth episode already so like this is my fourth week of doing it which is fucking crazy to me but it, it feels good um dude I, i'm i'm glad to have you on is there like any uh kind of like uh final remarks or anything else you you want to say something you you know you feel like now not like now now is your time to, to shine basically shoot man get some sun mm-hmm. eat better like actually eat better eat red meat too and don't forget that because i've been i've been doing that i've been getting some sun socializing mm-hmm. 
love the people you love Hondo, Caden, Wyatt, all those guys, all my people, I love you guys. Um, fucking work out. Work out how you want to work out, though. Everyone's like, oh, you got to do it this way, you got to do it that way. Like, figure out what and how you enjoy being healthy and then do that. Not just that, I feel like everybody's, like, biomechanically different too so like oh, yeah form form I, I argue is kind of relative like obviously yes there's a f there's a certain method to do something but there's also something called an activation zone yeah so we can have the same form but my show you know my elbows need to be down further mm -hmm. this or that you know but I exactly but just figure out what you like doing exactly make it fun don't make it a chore because I've been really working on my health recently and I feel as though that has allowed me to think like I was just saying, much more positively, much more creative, you know, mm -hmm. like creatively, that's not a Creatively. Word. Creatively, thank uh -huh. you, creatively. <laughs> yeah. Um, it hasn't made me smarter, as you can see, but <laughs> it's helped in other areas. Um, that might also be my bad. He's been hanging so, around some with me too much. <laughs> but yeah, no, just figure that out. Um, summer's coming, you know, make yourself happy. And then, yeah, that, that should really just be the, the main focus. Um, For sure work on work on your sensitivity uh and and make yourself uncomfortable so you you gain something from it that would be probably the biggest takeaway we'll have to do this again um we'll think of uh i'll try and think of some fun things too some some little random curve for balls. sure for sure and, and that's something i think i want to stress to like anybody else who comes on here is like i don't expect to be the only person I don't say I don't expect to be the one with like the authority to ask questions. I I oh, welcome okay. my guests to fucking, you know, t say whatever they want, and I, I I'm gonna give you like that floor many times throughout like the the recording session. Um, well, thanks thanks a bunch, bud. I appreciate yeah, it. I Happy love you. Uh, love you I'm, too, man. I look forward to the next time we'll be able to do this. Oh, but yeah. in the meantime, thank you everybody for watching. If you want to go find Avery, um, I, I'm gonna let leave that up to him if he wants to. Uh, What's it called? Plug his social media accounts. He's not really on it like that because he's <laughs> he has a life unlike <laughs> unlike the rest of us. Um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them down. Uh, anything else you want to see, let me know. Uh, if you want me to bring someone back from one of the previous episodes, also let me know. Your your ass is definitely gonna be back here. <laughs> I already know that. Don't forget to drink Celsius. Uh, one of the better alternatives for energy drinks. If you want, drink it if you want when they start paying him. Or that, and that would also be appreciated. <laughs> but anyway, thank you guys so much. I love you. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.